Okay, for this next exercise, we're going to create a series of repeatable components using Rhino and output into the laser cutter, uh, which we can then assemble into a three-dimensional object. Uh, we're going to touch on a couple points, such as how to properly export to the laser cutter, um, accounting for the width of the laser so that pieces attach or notch together uh, seamlessly. Okay, so to begin, I've made a few different layers. Um, I have the default layer, I have a construction layer, I have a helper layer for uh, drawing sort of uh, lines that aren't going to need to be cut or things that just sort of act as guidelines to me. Um, I've also got a dimensions layer. I'm going to delete these for now. Uh, I'm working with, uh, hypothetically, a material um, which has a thickness of 2.4 millimeters and this is judging from some of the work that was done previously uh, it seems like uh, with a material thickness of about 2.4 millimeters the width of the laser as it cuts the material out is about 0 0.8 millimeters and again if you're not very precise with this uh, it's very easy to end up with a sloppy model so I would strongly recommend uh, paying attention to the accuracy here so as a baseline component, I'm using a rectangle um, 15 millimeters by 60 millimeters. And I'm finding those dimensions, again on the dimensions layer, by typing DIM um, and dragging from endpoint to endpoint like this. Okay, I can turn that off for now. Now what I want to do is to first create notches uh, that would enable me to link these components together. And using the construction layer, I know that my notches should be um, a dimension of 2.4 millimeters because that's the thickness of the material. So let's try 2.4 and then drag down to here. And then I want to center this on the construction line. Okay, now I can copy this just a couple other places. And explode this whole geometry and trim. to make the notches. And then joining in. So I can see how this is already starting to make a, a geometry that can interlock and uh, work with other components. The only issue here is that when the laser cuts these out, um, like we said, there's a dimension of uh, 0 0.8 uh, as the width of the laser. So essentially, it's going to actually cut uh, along this as a center line, um, offsetting 0 0.4 millimeters on each side. So we can sort of visualize that. Let's make a new layer. We offset both sides. And put that on the cut line layer. This is actually the geometry that we would get, which is not what we want. If we check the dimensions now, What we wanted was this dimension of 2.4. However, ultimately, we're going to get a dimension of 3.2 because this is the outside of what's being cut with the laser. As the laser cuts down this black line, it 
burns a hole the size of these two purple lines. So what we need to do is account for that so that the inside of this line is 2.4 instead of 3.2. It's easily done. If we just cut this outside line, or again, take our final um, polyline border and offset by 0 0.4, which is equal to half of the width of the laser. If we cut this line, we'll now end up with this black line. So basically the only thing that we need to do is once we've drawn our 2D geometry, we need to offset to the outside by half the width of the laser, which should be 0 0.4 for a material thickness of 2.4, but this is something you'll need to investigate on your own. Let's take this into three dimensions and start assembling this together. Uh, we can turn off the dimensions for now and go to perspective viewport. Let's extrude this, making sure to cap, and the distance should be 2.4. Turn off the ISO curves. And we've still got this, um, this curve we can delete. This purple curve here, um, let me make it a bit darker. This is representing the line that we would need to give to the laser cutter to create this volume. So just for visualization, we can keep it here. Let's move it halfway up and group these together. All right. Now let's copy over and start rotating these and assembling them and see what kind of shapes we can come up with. Uh, one command that's gonna be useful for this is rotate 3D, which is the shortcut is just RR, or you can type rotate 3D. I would recommend, of course, using the shortcuts aliases. Uh, it's asking for rotation axis and the angle or first reference point. We want to rotate 90 degrees. Okay, so it just rotated 90 degrees along this axis that we gave it. Uh, we can do that again. Um, let's just do regular rotate. Uh, center of rotation here and copy. C for copy. Do 90 again. Okay, we now have two components and let's see if we can combine them together. It's going from that endpoint to this endpoint. Should snap together like that. So then stacking these blocks together um, and create a geometry like this. Uh, so now if I do select the poly surface, you can see I've got 25, including this one, or 24, uh, or six groups of four. So if I then move this geometry aside and on my cut sheet, for the laser cutter, I'm going to need 24 of these same pieces. Now, lucky, luckily, I've still got this um, border periphery here, which I can still use. Um, can ungroup this and hide this poly surface. And I know that even though this is 
still a dimension of 1.6 that ultimately it will give me a notch of 2.4, which is what I'm looking for. So if I just copy this, six times I can then explode this select duplicates uh, and remove these smaller geometries I don't need to cut anything twice um, so this will instead the laser cutter will just cut along this line um, just one time as opposed to duplicating curves. edges and then copy this block four times. And add one single line here. So this is now the simplest, most efficient way to get 24 of the same components if that's what we were looking for. And ready to go to the laser cutter and will give us the correct notch dimension.